It's like that bug up there is just responding to that bug over there. What's up everybody? So today I have brought out my TRX4 and there's something special in it that I want you to see. This is the Castle 10 amp back that you can set at various voltages and it will send power directly to your receiver and thus to your servo straight from the battery. So you see where it's hooked up here. Here's the battery cables. I know they look really great. And here is where I've soldered them directly onto the ESC cables. So battery power goes straight from here to there. And before it goes to the ESC, it will hit these cables and go straight to the back. The back wire travels to the receiver in there and I've plugged it into channel uh, one. It doesn't really matter what channel you plug it into as long as you're giving the receiver power from one of them. You may have a Hobbywing ESC like me or a Castle or something like that that has an internal back that you can set at six volts or 7.4 volts. I don't know if a lot of them do 8.4 volts, but that's also one you can do. This back will fight against this back if you have them both plugged in. So to avoid them fighting against each other, you have to take off the power supply, which is the middle wire in there. You just disconnect it from the plug and you just plug it right back in so you still have negative and you have signal. Everything works perfectly in it right now and the reason I bought this actually is because this servo, NSDRC RS1, has 1200 ounce inches of torque but the only way to get that is on 8.4 volts so obviously you have to get a beck because the ESC cannot supply that also the beck supplies more amps I don't know the difference between voltages and amps I'm not an electrical engineer to just get the gist of all this this supplies more power than this to the receiver which will put it straight to your servo now these little micro servos you might be worried about them having 8.4 volt power or actually I had it on 9 volt the other day and everything took it all these little micro servos in here took it none of them overheated none of them crapped out and they're all actually fine but the servo it is very fast and it has loads of power and torque I just found a tick on my leg and now it feels like there's stuff crawling all over me See if we can get this servo stuck in this little gap right there in between the bricks. It it wiggled its way out of there. It's it's still fighting. So the servo never just like gives up. It's still fighting. You can, you can still wiggle its way out of stuff. Uh oh, is the brass portal cover gonna hit? Yeah, that's great. Almost fell. This is basically, uh, well, I wouldn't say vertical, but you know. It still has all the power it needs to wiggle itself around and everything. Hmm. Okay. So it can keep itself straight and move the vehicle pretty well. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. I love when they do this. That is just so awesome. There's a lot of backing up and turning around and a bunch of stuff involved in this pile. So, you should be able to see it really shine pretty well here. Oh God. 
I've cleaned up so many of these piles. Like I cleaned up that entire pile right there and I've never found a snake in any of them. Just like three or four toads and a whole bunch of ants and worms and grub. Okay. Yeah, there's where it kind of just reaches its limit. Can still move everything, but if you can barely see it, it's it's flexing the entire like suspension components. It's not exactly having its power translated through everything. Ah, crap. I'm surprised it can even still turn it right there though. Cause it does get it to move around and everything, which is, oh, there we go. It's pretty impressive that it can still get it to move around and everything when the tires are all compressed like that. Nope, 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 nope. It's got enough power to flex the entire body, but you know, can't turn the wheels. Oh my God, it can flex the entire suspension mount right there, right behind the, yeah. The mount behind this, is it, that's not supposed to be moving, but it's flexing. There we go. squat down in this place because it's scary. It's quite impressive. Uh oh. Oh! It's balanced on that one wheel. Why won't it turn? It just goes straight. I'm turning left. Right. Dang it. There's another area where it'll probably struggle. It's fine. All right. Dang it. Uh, Castle Beck. Um. Uh, six stars out of ten. Didn't notice too much of a difference. I mean, it's like adding a cosmetic upgrade to your car, to your real car, and saying it adds like 20 horsepower, when in reality it doesn't do anything. I don't know. It does something, but it's hard to notice. I don't know. Because I remember when I installed this servo, and I was running off the 7.4 volt back from the ESC. And it was running like basically at this same power right here. And it was, I don't know, it had basically the same amount of torque. Maybe not the same amount of torque, but it definitely had the same amount of speed. And I just, I can't like exactly determine the difference between the two. There's just not a ton of difference because they're basically the same thing. The Beck is, I don't know, the Beck is well known and well renowned. I just can't like, put my finger on the difference it makes. But anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope this helped you out in some way. This was not an install video. Probably figured that out by now. But guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye. and 50 yards.